Okay, I don't know what's going on here. I think I might have a, a capacitor kind of thing. I really don't know. I was thinking what was going on here with this was an aluminum air type of battery where the uh, somehow one of the aluminum plates became the anode, the other became the cathode, the anode gets deteriorated with the uh, chemical reaction somehow, some way. But I, today I was at the dollar store and I got a couple of these uh, stainless steel cat food dishes. And just for giggles I thought, well, I can prove or disprove the um, aluminum air battery by switching metals to stainless steel. They're, this is mildly magnetic and I'm using a coffee filter between the uh, bowls and then this is a solution of the salt, uh, sea salt, Atlantic sea salt in uh, bottled water and it's doing the same thing and so now I'm drifting back to perhaps I've got a capacitor of some kind I really don't know but um, here's the little um, jewel thief and I've got this being charged with this and watch watch the brightness and watch the rundown time and the uh, little oscillator kicks off at about four and a half volts on this particular jewel thief that's that's how far down this will go and there's the the jewel thief on get the connection right here yeah. Now you'll notice this is dropping down. It's not staying on at a certain brightness. And this is why I think perhaps um, this might be a high farad electrolytic capacitor is what I've built here. But man, it's pretty high farad for this jewel thief to run that long on that. You can see it's dropping off at just about nothing. Now it's clicking off. And that's at a little less than half a volt. I'll put this back on here. And we'll give it a, a little jolt. And now you can actually hear the electrolysis bubbling in there. And I have a magnet as a connector on one side. And then a magnet on the other side. It's mildly magnetic stainless steel. And then, like I say, the electrolyte is water with this sea salt. And uh, that's what I've got going, which is the same thing I've been working with here. And I've been having this on a solar-powered pulse motor all day, and it's, you know, it's working fine. I'm sure if I pull this apart, though, I'm going to see a degradation on the anode part of that battery. But we'll just have to see. Now, the stainless steel, I can see some brown here, and this is the iron. This is probably the iron oxide that's coming out of the stainless steel, this cheap stainless steel from China. So that's part of the reaction that's going on right there. I just don't know what it is. Okay, let's try this again here. I wish I, I had better grasp on chemistry, but I don't. There's the um, jewel thief on again. And it goes up to about half a volt, um, 0.6 or so and then it uh, drops on down to about two a little below the two and of course this will stop working at uh, a little under half a volt about uh, 0.46 or so this particular jewel thief stops working but even at that point right there watch this this is this is something else that has me puzzled I'll take this out of the way here and I'll put one of my uh, low power pulse motors that works on almost nothing and even though this thing was discharged I'll put this on here and it'll still run this with what's in that battery there and there goes that pulse motor being run by the uh, energy that's still left in that cell or capacitor or whatever you want to call it but anyway that's the latest thing I've tried here is just a sea salt water and stainless steel and I've made these before with the Epsom salts or alum and of course they form up just fine as a rechargeable but using just sea salt that's a new one on me thanks for watching